In this video, I'm going to talk about the famous Bactrian camels. Hey guys, right now I'm at Nubra Valley. To be specific, this very place is named Hunda. Uh, there is a huge sand dune actually. And the unique place, this is actually the cold desert of India. Uh, there are very few places, rare places in this world where you can find a desert uh, above 3,200, 3,300 meters. Uh, this area generally, uh, there are around 50 to 60 camels. As you can see, there are two different hunches. Uh, because this is no ordinary or regular camel which you do find in different part of the world and generally in the desert This very animal is endemic to this in India only in Ladakh to Nubra Valley to this very region Apart from this area you can find them in Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, some Central Asian countries They are very endemic and they are very ancient as well So because of the for the tourists uh, this place is getting popular in between the tourists and they are offering a camel ride or a camel safari if you can see that side till the red flag and it's not actually expensive it's just 450 rupees or you can go to there is another shorter you know route where you can pay 300 350 rupees and you can go and even you can take some photos by just paying them uh, maybe 100 200 rupees this area is actually beautiful and the, another unique point of nubra valley is this is one of the most greenest valley in the whole of ladakh region nubra literally means the valley nubra literally means the valley of flower the name given because of uh, whole Ladakh area is actually dry but this very area is completely uh, flourishing with greenery everywhere. camel is called Bactrian camel. Why Bactrian camel is important? Well, it's not the only factor or it's not the reason people go to Ladakh or visit Ladakh. But yes, it's also an integral part of the biodiversity of Ladakh. It's also an animal which is was few years back on the verge of extinction. So I think this is very important, one of the most incredible creature, one of the beautiful creature we have in the mountains or in Ladakh. So why not learning and knowing something more, some more information about this beautiful creature. So let's start with the name. Why Bactrian? What is Bactria? Now Bactria was the ancient name of Afghanistan. Yes, Afghanistan. And this camel, uh, as the name goes, Bactrian camel was originated in the ancient time from the northwestern part of Afghanistan and also from the Central Asian steppes. Uh, countries like Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, Iran, even Afghanistan and only in Ladakh. These are the places or regions where you can find these beautiful animals. Now, just because it's originated from Bactria or ancient Afghanistan, how Afghanistan was called in ancient time. Just imagine we uh, studied in a history book when we used to be school children about Alexander North Great who actually uh, tried to invade India and his old route was through uh, Afghanistan. Well, Afghanistan was not known Afghanistan that time, it was known as Bactria. So that is why the name goes Bactrian camel. Now this camel, as I already told, is double hump. Generally the camel usually what, which we see in India and Rajasthan, Thar Desert or any other countries like for example the Arabic Peninsula in the Middle East or the Gulf countries, even in African Sahara deserts or some other part of desert in the world, you have the single uh, humped camel, which is uh, called scientifically called dromedary camels. Now, Bactrian camels are doubled hump. 
These camel, if I go for the appearances, these are little bit shorter heighted, but they are sturdy, they are bulky, the weight is much more, uh, more than the uh, regular camels. So they are also built for the rugged tail. They are very tough and can live and thrive and survive in extreme temperatures and extreme climate, high altitude mountains. So that was the reason. You see, during the ancient Silk Route, which was from China, all the way from China, via Mongolia, via Indian Himalayan region, they used to pass India and then, then through uh, Central Asia, they used to travel all the way up to Europe and other Central Asian countries. Now, they needed an animal because in ancient time, 2,000, 3,000 or even 500 years back, we didn't have, uh, you know, cars or flights or, for example, ships to carry things, trading goods, for example. So, they needed an animal which is very uh, tough, which can survive and work because this uh, Bactrian camel, they can live and survive from minus 40 degrees celsius till plus 40 degrees celsius can you imagine minus 40 to plus 40 so this is a huge temperature gap or temperature differences they can thrive and survive and live till plus 40 which is extremely hot and minus 40 people who haven't seen how does it look like you cannot even imagine in your worst dreams which is minus 40 I have so far seen minus 30, so I know how exactly it can be in minus 40. Everything is frozen, you don't have anything to eat. So these camels can actually live there. Now, what is there, uh, what are the qualities, what are the things they have because they can live? First, they are not very uh, kind of short-coated like normal usual camels we see. They are very, very, they, they, the first they have on their skin is very thick, it's much more longer. So it's actually a long coat animal number one number two they can literally eat anything they can eat uh, for example tough bark of a tree they can chew it and digest it they can chew and digest any kind of shrubs thorns cactus anything their mouth their tongue is actually very tough in that way so they can eat and digest anything secondly the temperature capability already had told that is also another very important factor that they can actually survive in this kind of uh, places now, if I talk about Ladakh, many of you know that all the places in Ladakh which is uh, visited by tourists are all higher than 3,000, 3,500 meters. Uh, if I talk about the Mongolian region, Tiberian region, parts of China, these are also high altitude region. If I talk about the Central Asian steppes, now steppes means actually vast plains, but then those plains are situated in very high altitude area. If I talk about the Pamir mountains, for example, it also goes till 6,000 meters. So the general usual uh, altitude is more than 3,000, 3,500 meters. Secondly, these camels are very strong. They can actually carry anything between 100 to 200 kgs and can walk up to 40, 45 kilometers every day with such kind of loads. So these are the factors of the reason in ancient time, those traders from China, Mongolia, India and other parts of Central Asian countries who used to travel all the way across uh, to Europe to sell their goods, for example, so they were literally dependent on these animals. So that is the reason from Central Asian steppes and Afghanistan, this animal started spread over China, Mongolia, some parts of India, then uh, obviously Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, some part of Iran even and Afghanistan. These are the country till today you can find some of these species. Coming back to Ladakh, because we are in India, so I think that you might be more interested about uh, how this animal ended up in Ladakh. What, what was the history? So I dug around a little bit. Uh, there is the local historian uh, and his book and then there is this current science uh, journal. Uh, according to them, this uh, animal, Bactrian camel, appeared in Ladakh first time was in 1870, so early 19th century. And as I know, as we might have also known that ancient Silk Road was closed around five decades, so 50, 60 years back in the early 1950s. And just after that, when uh, Silk Road was uh, closed and there was infrastructure going on during this time in 1950s, in 1947, India got its independence and started uh, building up infrastructure in remote areas like Ladakh, for example, building up roads, building up uh, dams, building up bridges. So out of a sudden, this animal, this bacterium camel were not needed anymore for anyone. And out, uh, the result out of which it came that this animal, another 30-40 years after from 1950s, 
by say 1990s they were already on the verge of extinction there are only few dozens of the camels were scattering around roaming around in the nubra valley region so the first thing happened in 2000 and early 2000 some locals from the hunder village now hunder is a small village or beautiful place in in the nubra valley of ladakh some villages took an initiative they started uh, getting those camels they started farming and breeding them and in 2003 the camel ride or camel safari in ladakh first time it was starting in 2003 obviously there was uh, people were skeptical a little bit many thought that this was not a good idea because why would tourists come to a mountainous region and why would they go for a camel ride but some villages who started it they proved them wrong because today there are people standing in a queue to give, wait for their chance to actually hump on those uh, double hump camel uh, the rate goes around 300 400 rupees it's very cheap I have talked to tourists while I was traveling in Radak. Many people said that yes, we have seen camels before, we have rode a camel before, but then doing it in Rajasthan or in Dubai or somewhere else, it was a completely different experience than uh, just come, coming into the mountain in the Himalayan region where most of them didn't even expect to find a desert and sand dunes, and then there are a few hundred camels. And just for a few hundred rupees, you can actually uh, take a ride on them, and that too. Just imagine you're with a camel, you're in a desert, but what you're looking at is you have surrounded by snow kept 6,000, 7,000 meters high mountains. So that's intriguing. Now, there are obviously, see, in any things in life which happens, there cannot be always the positive side or always the negative side. Every coin has its two sides. So definitely, here in this incident, also there were drawbacks. Uh, the, some wildlife activists started accusing at the locals or those uh, camel breeder or who actually runs the business organizing the camel safaris uh, accusing of abuse of that animal i personally think yes using any animal for any kind of work is an abuse because uh, it doesn't matter you believe in god or you don't at least you have to believe in nature but mother nature didn't create cow for example for us to milk them or the milk is not produced for us to milk it. It's uh, in a way, it's also immoral. In a way, it's also abuse because the milk in the cow's um, body or organism, it's the first place it's actually created for the calf to be fed on. But we steal it, so it's stealing. Or for example, slaughtering animal, even just telling this is our food. So in a way, yes, it's kind of abuse, but there is another point to look at it, another way to look at it. That is, just imagine, as I told you, that in, uh, before 2000, these camels were almost on the verge of extinction. Just after some local villages started the initiative, organizing these tours, organizing these uh, camel safaris, their numbers started getting increasing. If today you count in three, four villages, that is number one, Hunder, then Biscuit, then Shumur, and Tigger, these four villages where people are actually uh, having those camels or doing running this business. Now out of a sudden within just uh, a 20 years of span from 2000 today is 2000 now it is 2020 within a 20 years of span it grew their number grew to almost 300 camels 300 individuals. So in a way actually if these the locals didn't take up this opportunity or using this camel the it would have been resulted in complete extinction of this beautiful and incredible animal. So logically, even though I'm completely against of any kind of animal abuse, even though I'm a true animal lover, but the fact remains that just because there was no initiative at all from the government, uh, these camels were just roaming around by themselves. Now that the people have taken about taken up this initiative, uh, as I told you earlier, started from Hunder village. In 2003, they have actually formed a union uh, to actually preserve and to actually organize the business in an organized way. Because into before 2000, those camels were free. Now, if you go there, those camels cost almost about hundred thousand or one lakh rupees. So that is also an integral part of the economy of uh, the Nubra Valley. 
because you see there are more than 45 families today 45 to 50 families today who are running who are involved in this business and that is i'm talking about only in hunder village there are people from this kit there are people from uh, other villages like sumur and tigar so uh, there are almost few hundred people's livelihood is dependent completely on this animal now just because these guys are taking up uh, this as, a, as their job or profession they have, they have to take care so they are feeding those animals they are taking care of them these uh, bacterial camels generally live for say around 40-50 years sometimes maybe even a little lesser they, uh, the, their gastrocin period is around 13 months it's generally one cuff but sometimes even two cuffs can be produced and uh, born and in just one year, in 2012, we are, I have seen, I have taken some statistics, for example, in just one year, they have produced around 21 cows. So another 10 years, if there is some subsidies or some preservation program offered by the government, then I think it would be really useful. Because the reason is, in the extreme mountains in the Ladakh region, uh, all kind of infrastructure which we generally get here in the plains is much more wider, much more useful, much more easier. But for them to even manage a veterinary doctor is a luxury. But still from the government there is veterinary doctors, so there are programs, subsidies, cattle food, etc. Medicines are given from boats, for ships, for horses, for cows, for yaks. But unfortunately bacteria and camel yet is not listed in that particular list. So that uh, the people who are breeding them can be, uh, you know, get some facilities, get some help from the government side. So these villages so far has uh, formed the union, as I told. After them, the villages from uh, Sumur and this kid also came along in the bandwagon, following the, their neighbors' footsteps. They also uh, formed a an union, and they are uh, dividing the work and the business introducing and training others as well so more than a few hundred families are engaged in this business so next time you go to Ladakh definitely visit Nubra Valley because not just because of this camel obviously it's one of the most beautiful and incredible place in India one of the most beautiful and incredible place definitely in Ladakh it's a must visit many people just visit Nubra Valley for one day it's like you know almost five hours journey from uh, lake crossing through Khardungla, the highest motorable pass in India. Uh, it's also an amazing experience just to drive and go there. But I suggest you better stay there at least for one night because Nubra Valley is just one huge valley. It's not a name of a small village. There are at least five, six different villages which is very, which worth to visit. First, obviously Hundar, where you have the sand dunes. Then there is this village called Diskit. This kit monastery is one of the ancient, one of the biggest and one of the most beautiful monastery which is situated in this kit valley. You might have already seen the video. Uh, I have already done a video, it's on my channel. Just look at the video of Nubra Valley. It's uh, a detailed video where I have explained everything from uh, what to do, where to go, where to stay. Uh, there are a few videos I have made about few hotels so that you know how the hotel looks like, what are the rates like, what are the facilities you can get. The best place to stay, according to me, in uh, Nubra is uh, this kit. From this kit, Hundar is very nearby. You can also, if you have another day, one more day, then you can go to uh, Turtuk. Turtuk is almost 70, 80 kilometers from uh, uh, this kit, which is at the border. That's the last village of India during 1965 or 1971. I'm not really confirmed, so uh, please excuse me. Uh, India-Pakistan war, India successfully captured the village before that it was in the Pakistani territory. So this is now in India. Tuktuk also comes under Nubra Valley region. And Nubra is also the gateway uh, for the highest army camp in the world or the highest battlefield in the world for say, that is Siachen. Siachen, uh, to go to Siachen, Nubra is the way or via Khardungla as well. So go there, visit these animals, take a selfie with them just spread your love spread keep spreading positivity and please keep watching my videos let me know what you think about this particular video if you like my videos please do subscribe because that would be a help that would be a support which i really need i definitely need to know what are the things you have liked or anything you have disliked in me, my videos if i have said anything wrong please put your valuable comments because i really think that those comments are very very valuable to me be healthy, be safe, take care of your friends and family.
ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ